with you guys on how to shop when you are on a weight loss journey or when you're losing weight or this could be even after you've already lost weight. I was on that journey for myself. So if you've been here for a while, you kind of know my story. If not, if you're new here, hi, I'm Max. And um, I did a video called Weight Loss Journey and I'll link that below for the people that are new here. And you can kind of follow along with that. However, on that journey, I made quite a few mistakes shopping so i kind of want to be able to use this as a resource for you guys so that you could get some valuable information that could help you so if that sounds interesting to you just keep watching okay guys so i am going to cover four main topics on how to shop when you're on a weight loss journey we're going to talk about sizing uh, we're going to talk about what to buy where to buy it and when to buy it right so I kind of broke it up like that so it'll be a cohesive video um, before I get into the topics I want to kind of go over a few things so what I'm wearing on my lip is um, the cork liner and then I just did the Fenty lip gloss and I wanted to answer a couple of questions and what i'll do is i'll start linking what my lip combo is what i'm wearing in the video below and even like my makeup choices because i usually get asked a few questions about that right um as far as outfit of the day um i'll probably stand up and do one i'm just really casual because i just popped in over here to just pick up a few things so i'm just kind of wearing a valentino slide uh anthro long cardigan and sloppy like cuffed jeans chanel earrings and just a big slouchy bag so that's kind of what i'm wearing but i'll stand up and i'll do that but i want to oh and a hermes cuff my normal jewelry that i wear all the time um but i wanted to talk to you guys about uh the last video i did i know i did a video on my beauty favorite so thanks to everyone who watched that and there were a few questions that I didn't really get a chance to answer when I did the video because I didn't know the questions existed. So I tried to answer them in the, the description box, but I know everybody doesn't read that. So let me go over that really, really quick. No, I haven't had any pl plastic surgery on my face because that was one of the questions. But what I have had is filler and I get Botox. But as you can tell by me being able to move my face that I don't have any Botox right now. I probably go once a year, once or twice a year. So I usually go around my birthday anniversary to do it. So I actually have an appointment coming up and I do filler probably once a year too. I did filler uh, maybe two weeks ago. So I get the lines in this, but I usually, like I said, go once a year. And the other question was about wigs. I don't wear wigs, you guys, I wear I'm old school, I wear a sew-in weave, right? So I wear bundles that are sewed in under my braided, over my braided hair, and then I have a frontal installed. And the other question was that I get a lot is about my hairstylist. My hairstylist is my best friend, and she also has her own church. So she's kind of in her ministry, so she's not really accepting any new clients right now. Um, but she did say that I could probably come in on one of my appointments because I go weekly and um, kind of take a little clips of video so I could kind of share a video all about my hair. But just so you guys know, I come from a hair family. Like my sister-in-law is a professional hairstylist. My brother-in-law is a hairstylist. My husband used to be a barber. Like I said, my best friend is a hairstylist. I even went to college mythology school myself. Um, so, you know, we're all kind of hair beauty fashion people so it's um something that you know if you guys know i change hair quite often like i change the hairstyle often um and as far as the color um i buy bundles and then we custom color it to fit my skin tone now she does her own thing to kind of get it light the way that i like it and um you know we like i said we play with it but that's pretty much everything that has to do with the last video okay so i'm gonna wrap that up and let's get started on the video so how to shop when you're on a weight loss journey so the first topic the because i broke it up into four main topics like i said the first one is going to be about sizing right 
And what I want to share about sizing is I want you to understand how sizes are defined in terms of the different categories, okay? So I think that's very important to understand that when you're on a weight loss journey when it comes to you shopping. So there's women's sizes, women slash plus, there's misses, and then there's junior sizes, okay? So junior sizes are gonna be your three, five, seven, nine, 11, those are your junior sizes. Misses sizes are gonna be zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, even 16, 18, 20. Um, and the reason why I say misses, I'll get, I'll explain it to you in a minute. Even though those sizes seem like they're women's sizes, they're not, those are just extended sizes of misses, okay? Um, and then you'll have uh, extra large and double X. Those all fall under misses. And then women's slash plus size will be uh, 14W, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, all the W's, all the way up to, I think they go up to 34, maybe even 36. And then it'll be 0X all the way up to like 5X, 6X, okay? So we'll start with the women's sizes. Women's sizes are cut on a larger size, a plus size frame. So the pattern is made all the necessary adjustments for a plus size body. So it's made allowances for larger breasts, a bigger back, a bigger stomach, all while keeping the normal measurements for a normal height person. Does that make sense to you guys? So it's not gonna give you like a big size with long arms, you know what I mean? It's gonna give you the adjust, it's gonna give you the measurements based off of a fit model that was plus size. Um, so that is what women's and plus sizes mean, right? And so women's sizes are going to be a size and a half larger than misses sizes, okay? So misses sizes, which are also known as standard sizes, are cut on um, a fit model that is a standard size, right? And she's usually probably a two or a four. No, probably a two. They're usually zeros or twos. And then they just add the necessary inches to kind of go up in size. So it hasn't made any adjustments for someone with, you know, uh, a bigger stomach or oversized breast or oversized, you know, arms or thighs or anything. It hasn't done any of those adjustments. It's just adding inches based off of the standard fit model that you would have in standard sizes. Um, so you will find that if you are a 14W, you do not fit into a 14 regular or if you are a 2X, you're not gonna fit into the double X in misses, which is standard size. And then when you get to juniors, it's cut on, um, it's kind of a teenage cut. It's cut on an underdeveloped body where the fit model, you know, usually doesn't have hips or breasts, you know, it's, it's kind of made for juniors, for teenagers. So that is that sizing. So that's gonna be a half a size to a whole size different in a misses, okay? So misses are gonna allow to give you extra interest in the breast and extra interest in the hips, where misses kinda does a deduction on that. Well, I mean, juniors does the deduction on that. Misses allows for that. So strike that, reverse what I said. What you want to remember that though, the difference between juniors and misses is a half a size to a whole size, right? So. For example, if you are a size four in Mrs. Standard sizes, you will find that usually in juniors, you're going to be like a seven, usually a seven, start there, seven to a nine. Now, stores that are going to carry women's and plus. Now, we know the specialty stores, Lane Bryant, Torrit, um, what is it, Catherine's, I, I can't even remember you know, will carry plus sizes, okay? And they're specialty stores and they cater to that client. Now, when you get to standard sizes, those are most of your mall brands, which are, I don't know, Bernier Republic, Gap, um, J. Crew, White House Black Market, Chico's, you know, all those kind of stores like that. And then junior stores, there aren't really a lot left. I know when I was younger, there used to be 579, Contempo's, stuff like that. So I think the only ones I really basically see right now is uh, 
garage, garage sales junior sizes, okay? So now that you understand how sizing runs, you need to kind of make a mental note of that. So when you begin your shopping process, you wanna know where you're gonna go and where you're gonna fall, okay? Let's talk about weight loss and how that corresponds to sizes. When you are starting in the plus size, women's sizes in specialty stores and you're starting from a 26, 28 or whatever you're starting from in there, just know that there's usually about 20 to 25 pounds in between sizes. They're cut very generously um, where you're able to fluctuate within 20 to 25 pounds and still be able to still have a decent integrity in the size, you know. It just really depends on your proportions too, but for the most part, because we know that these companies are making things so that they can make, they're making items so they can get the best bang for their buck. And in order to do that, they need to have um, the size accommodate as many people as they can. And because these aren't made to order pieces, these are just off the rack. They usually, when you get to plus sizes, it's usually around 20 to 25 pounds you're able to fluctuate and you'll be able to kind of stay within the same size. Now, when you get to straight sizes, you get to Mrs. sizes, it's 10 pounds or less. It could be seven pounds and you're usually dropping to the next size. Um, junior size pretty much runs the same way. It may even be less than juniors, it may be five. Um, so just keep that in mind. And that is something that you need to make a mental note of. So when you're starting to get ready to plan to buy, just know based off of calculations, you know, where you're gonna fall at. Um, the next thing I wanna tell you about sizing is you need to know what size you're gonna wear before you go shopping. So of course you're gonna take your measurements, right? But what I suggest you do is I suggest you go to a department store and you want to try on a French designer and an Italian designer because if you're doing, you know, a lot of online shopping um, and you're going to end up usually buying from, let's just say you're buying from contemporary brands, those aren't just always made in America sizes. Like some of the, like Zara is, is an Italian brand, so it's cut with Italian sizing. Um, there are some French brands, like I've been buying stuff from, uh, what is it? Uh, I've been buying things from, what is it called? Cezanne, and that's a French sizing, so the cut is different. So you wanna know what your sizes are in those. So you're just strictly going for informational purposes only, and you wanna make a note of it. So you wanna try on those different designers just to give you an idea of how, you, how your size translates over into European sizes, all right? So I already mentioned that you need to take your measurements and you need to know them at all times. I suggest taking your measurements. I took my measurements every two weeks and it wasn't necessarily just to shop, it was just how I was charting my weight loss. Um, but before you go shopping, you know, you definitely need to know your measurements and you probably need to make sure that you're checking your bra measurements. When I say take measurements, not just for clothing, but for your foundational pieces too. So for bras, that's very, very, very important because if you're gonna be on this journey for a while and you have a lot to lose, you're gonna change bras frequently just as much as you do clothing sizes, all right? And then you also need to make sure that you are getting measured for your shoe sizes because I think we forget that when we lose weight, especially if you have to lose large amounts of weight, that sometimes your foot size change. So you will need to get measured for, for um, shoes too. So you'll need to know your measurements for that, all right? So I wanna say that um, a good tool to use is the Fit Finder. There are Fit Finders on a lot of websites that will help you be able to find your size. So um, you need to know what size you wear at a particular brand and then it'll calculate it and adjust it to its brand. So that is a really, really, really good tool to use. Okay, so the next main topic that we're gonna talk about is what to buy. So now that you understand how sizing works, I want to be able to kind of help you to let you know what you should buy. Um, and you guys, these are all just kind of guidelines. Of course, you can adjust them to fit your needs, but these are mistakes that I kind of made. So I kind of want to help you where you don't make the same mistakes that I did, because I made quite a few, all right? So you're gonna need to understand how to build a capsule. And you're probably gonna say, I'm not a capsule wardrobe person. And that's 
great, that's fine, you don't have to be, but during this process, you're gonna keep the quantity down of clothing that you are purchasing until you've reached the goal, your desired goal, or where you feel like I'm fine, I'm set, now I'm ready to start to rebuild. So, understanding that capsule is super important. It's gonna allow you to maximize with the small amount of clothing, all right? So, I think one of the tools that I see the ladies using now are the 333 rule, which will give you three tops, three bottoms, and maybe three shoes or three accessories, however. Um, there are a lot of videos on it on TikTok, but I know a lot of the ladies are not on TikTok. I think there are a few creators that kind of did videos on it here, and I will link some. I think I saw a couple of them. I'll Google some and I'll link like one below so that you could use that as a guideline. And what that does is it allows you, like I said, three, three and three, three tops, three bottoms, three accessories or three shoes. And then you can make a ton of outfits for that, all right? The next thing that you're gonna need to buy is you're gonna buy basics. Now is not the time to buy statements. And remember you guys, you can still look your absolute best with basics on. You can use, you still you still will be able to utilize your old wardrobe for accessories, for scarves, for there's all kinds of jewelry pieces, even for um, like cardigans and knitwear, those things look fine oversized. So when I'm telling you to buy basics, those are just kind of like your foundation pieces and that will still allow you to look very nice and stylish, you know, so don't feel like, gosh, I'm gonna be looking so boring doing this process, and you're not. You're not gonna look boring. You can still look fabulous. You can still, you know, look stylish and put your best face forward, okay? Now, the next thing I'm gonna say is buy fit over quality, right? And the reason why I say that is while you're on this process, it doesn't make sense to invest in high quality expensive pieces because you're going to be transitioning out of them, right? And that's something I had to learn the hard way. I reached a certain level and I thought I was done and I went out and splurged. If you've been here for a while, you guys remember I bought all that Kate shit and now it's I'm swimming in it. I can't use it. So I'm going to try to see if I can get it tailored, which I don't know if he could take it down that far because I think I bought eights and tens and I'm a four. Um, I buy some sixes, so maybe. We'll see, you know. I actually just bought a two the other day, but that's another story. Anyway, so you want to focus on the fit because right now what's important is making sure that your foundation pieces are fitting you well and that you feel comfortable and confident in them. Now, the next thing I'm gonna suggest you do is to buy solids and not prints. And the reason why I say that, and you may be a print person, you may look fabulous in prints, but when I suggested that you're gonna buy fit over quality because it didn't make sense to spend money on things that you know cost a, cost a lot, when you are trying to buy a print in low quality that is inexpensive, it shows. <laughs> and you guys got to remember, we rely on these clothes to kind of um, give us balance and symmetry. And when you have low quality prints, inexpensive prints, um, the seams, it, it shows, it highlights all of the imperfections um, of the garment as well as it does not create the proper silhouettes. And you know what? Let me grab some items and I'm gonna demonstrate it for you. So give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so this is a print. I don't really have a lot of prints in my wardrobe, but I just kind of grab what I could grab really quick. So this was a piece that I hauled with you guys in the, I wanna say winter, maybe winter or spring, early spring, I don't know. But this was a piece that is from Zara. Now, this doesn't have a ton of print on it, but it does have print, right? And I want you to pay attention to where you see the seams are. And you see how they're not really connected so that it's a, a full image. You'll get images that are cut off. Same thing with the arms. They don't line up and it'll cut off. Now, if I'm trying to wear this jacket and I'm relying on this jacket to kind of help balance out my silhouette and my proportions, if the jacket is fitted, let's just say this is a fitted jacket, because the seams and the things aren't lined up properly because this is an inexpensive piece, 
it is going to highlight all of the areas that normally a quality printed piece would be able to camouflage, right? So if I have a big back and this seam isn't lined up, it's, when it stretches like that, you're really gonna see that it's not lined up and that it's of low quality and it's not gonna help camouflage what we really needed to camouflage. Now, let me show you a piece that is high quality. So this is a that's, piece that's part of my dopamine haul, right? So, and these, I'm, I've had the haul done, you guys. I just haven't edited it yet. So I am gonna get to it. So I don't want you to think I'm not gonna do it. But these are kind of expensive. I wanna say these are like 268 bucks. But you see the seams and how the print is lined up. So I'm putting these on my body. And let's just say when I'm walking or uh, when I'm standing, it's gonna give a nice clean presentation, right? So it's not gonna be uneven lined up. It's not gonna see stretching of the stitches or anything like that. And the print on here is going to lay beautifully on the body. So if you are someone who likes prints and things like that, I would say hold off on them until, you could, until you're able to invest in higher quality pieces. Also, I don't think you're gonna get a true bang for your buck for like wild prints like this while you're in that transition period of buying things to just fit for the body that you have right now. Cause those are pieces that you're really gonna be able to do a lot of mixing and matching with. Um, you may be able to find it, but I doubt it. I, in my experience, I wasn't able to really find prints that, you know, of course you can find stripes, but you still gotta be careful with those because sometimes those don't line up. You can find gingham, but you still got to be careful with that, you know, things like that. So I just want to say that it's important to me, and I think it's a good idea to just focus on solids right now. If you already own print jackets or blazers or sweaters or cardigans or whatever, use what you already have instead of purchasing new print right now, okay? Another thing that I would suggest buying is um, knits. Knits are a great thing to buy when you're on a weight loss journey. They are very forgiving. Like I said, you're able to kind of get away with oversized knits. So I believe that they will give you a good bang for your buck while you're on um, a weight loss journey. I think stretchy fabrics are going to be your friend. You're going to rely very heavily on stretchy fabrics. Um, and remember, you're looking for things that are on a budget when you're buying stretchy fabrics. Don't be like me. I bought Eileen Fisher, which cost me a pretty penny. And even though I was able to stay with them for a few sizes, I mean, I was spending, you know, two, $300 for each piece. And, you know, I was able to kind of transition them for two or three sizes. But those are pieces that I would normally like to keep in my wardrobe forever. So... I believe that I should have waited to buy things, like I said, lower quality, but the idea I had was right, which was to buy stretchy fabrics. I just bought too high of quality stretchy fabrics, okay? Um, if you need tailored pieces, you're gonna look for pieces that have maybe an elastic waist in it. Um, you're gonna look for pieces that have those adjustments, like those button adjustments that'll allow for you to let out the waist, let in the waist, things like that. Also, you can buy, because we're in this kind of, um, because we're in this time in fashion right now where we're all on the self-discovery of how to find our personal style, we have an array of silhouettes that are available to us. So one of the big trendy silhouettes that is available right now is wide leg. So if you're able to find a wide leg that has stretch in it and buy it slightly tighter, just a little bit, as it starts to loosen up on you, you'll still be able to wear it and it'll still fit proportional because the idea behind the garment was to be you know, loose fitting anyway, if that makes sense to you. I did that on a couple of things and it worked wonders for me. Like I bought barrel jeans and I bought them at like a slightly tight on my waist so as I went down in size, because they were already made to be big, as I went down in size, I was still able to still kind of pull them off because the look of the pant was supposed to be loose like that anyway. So that is a really good tip to use. I also want to remind you that you're also gonna need to buy 
foundation pieces. You're gonna need to buy bras. Just like I told you, you need the measurement for them. You're gonna need to buy some bras. I would suggest maybe not buying more than two or three because like I said, if you're on this journey for the long haul, you um, are gonna be switching sizes quite a bit. And I know the bras that I buy are expensive. Now, if you're part of you know the itty bitty committee where you can get bras and expensive, then yes, up the, quali up the quantity. But for me, um, I only bought like three bras at a time because I've changed sizes in bras quite a bit, you know? And like I said, the bras that I have to buy because I'm fuller chested are very expensive and there aren't any like low cost alternatives. What I would suggest though, is that you look for clearance bras. If you're in the winter time, then you could buy those weird clearance colors like purple with yellow flowers on it. I mean, it's gonna be under clothes. Nobody's gonna see it anyway. So I would suggest that then you can at least get the bra marked down, right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about where to buy, right? So you've got, you understand sizes, you know what you need to buy. Let's talk about where it is that you're gonna go and get these things, all right? So, since I've been back on YouTube, I've been seeing a lot of ladies do these Amazon and Walmart hauls. And I started looking through the things and although I haven't made any purchases there, if I was still on my weight loss journey, I would definitely go there to get my stretchy, forgivable knit pieces you know um i saw eileen fisher lookalikes on there for a really really good reasonable price so i would i would go to those kind of retailers um i would also suggest that you try the outlet store so if you are like me someone who loves banana republic or you love um j crew try their outlet version those are really good places to be able to still maintain your style that you like, but you're gonna get, you know, it's gonna be a lower quality fabric. So the prices are going to be a lot more reasonable in, so in places like that. And also when you're shopping at the outlets like Banana Republic Outlet or Gap or J. Crew Outlet, it's gonna be a lot easier to create uh, capsule wardrobes. When they do the buy for those stores, uh, and they also do uh, their merchandising, they buy pieces that kind of all go together so that you can help create wardrobes. So it's not like a website where there's a million pieces and you just kind of got to figure it out yourself. When you walk into these like spe these specialty stores like J. Crew and Banana, you'll see that the pieces that are sectioned off all kind of intertwined with each other. So you're able to create capsule wardrobes really, really, really easy. So if you're someone who struggles with that, I would suggest to kind of use those kind of outlets. Um, I know Gap has an outlet, J. Crew, um, Banana Republic has an outlet. There's quite a few of them that I know that have, even Ralph Lauren has an outlet. You know, there's quite a few outlets. You can even try Old Navy, I believe. I don't know, I don't think Old Navy has an outlet, but that you're still able to like find pieces that kind of mix and match together um, at a decent price point so that you're able to kind of have a decent uh, capsule wardrobe, like a nice, you know, attractive capsule wardrobe during that time. Now for one-offs, if you you know, you may be someone who has um, a professional job, so you're gonna need blazers and things like that. So I would try Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Ross's, places like that, um, Nordstrom Rack, um, off Saks Fifth, you know, the higher end department stores. I would even try men's departments. Uh, a lot of times men's offers a lot more basics and they tend to give a deeper discount than women's do. Also thrifting, and you know, if you're gonna need the structured, heavier quality coat, I would suggest thrifting it or I would suggest going to those outlet retailers and, um, also, like I said, looking in the men's department, you're gonna have a better chance of getting a better price point in places like that. And remember you guys, this is temporary, so you wanna buy as basic as you possibly can. Now remember, you're also going to need to maybe invest in shoes. So now's not the time to be, you know, going to buy the latest, you know, uh, YSL pumps or whatever. So there's tons of lookalike shoes, but I would say, get just what you really truly need. Remember that there are places like Kohl's and DSW, Penny Cell Shoes, Macy's Cell Shoes, and those are all like pretty, you know, reasonably priced so that you can, you know, not feel so bad if you transition out of that size, um, you know, having to give them away or resell or whatever it is that you do to them, okay? So we've covered what to buy, 
where to buy. Let's talk about when to buy. When is it time to buy? Now, this is something that I made a lot of mistakes on, guys, a lot of mistakes. So I kind of wrote down a few notes to make sure that I am clear and concise when I say this, okay? So when to buy. I would suggest that if you are starting with high quality, expensive pieces in your closet that you are sizing out of, I would suggest you alter those first. Now, I'm not saying alter the whole wardrobe. I'm saying take the pieces, your favorite pieces that you find yourself wearing a lot, and see if you can get those altered to accommodate your fit now. Remember, you're going for fit. So if you're able to rely on those pieces um, for a few sizes, then do that, you know? Um, transition down using what you already have, you know? If you have, now I used my son and my husband, so I have always been someone who shop, who borrow from their closet. And there was a time where I was bigger than my husband. So when I was transitioning down, I was borrowing his stuff. So I would say, use what you have, which, what's available to you. If you have daughters, if you have people that are smaller than you and they're comfortable with sharing clothing with you, use that. Use what you can to kind of limit yourself with having to really invest money in something that is only temporary, okay? And remember, like I said, you're focusing on You're gonna say, well, Max, when do I get to go shopping? You know, I've you know put in all this work, I've dropped some weight, I wanna get a few new things. But I would suggest you guys that if you're, like I said, if you're, if you're on a long journey, right, and you know you've got a ways to go, and you're saying you're at the halfway point or three quarter point, I would suggest that you only shop when you know that the quality of the fit of what you have now is just unsatisfactory. So when you have, what you have in your closet is can no longer be altered anymore and the quality, the fit quality is very poor, then I would say, okay, strike out. And when you strike out, like if you still have a ways to go, I would follow the previous steps that I told you about, you know, understanding sizes, what to buy, where to buy, okay? Next thing is I wanna talk about is I would suggest to give yourself some time before you start purchasing large quantities of clothing. Um, stick to that capsule as much as you can every time you need to go shopping until you have transitioned into your final size, until you are comfortable where you're at and you're in maintenance, buy small quantities. Also, I would suggest not buying anything expensive, not splurging on anything, unless it's something like, let's just say you're 15 pounds away from goal and what you're buying in that size is still going to accommodate you when you're 15 pounds lighter. Then that makes sense, but it doesn't make sense that if you buy it at, um, you know, you've got 100 pounds to go or you've got 70 and you know that that's not gonna be able to really work for you then. And those are some of the mistakes that I made. So I would suggest going very, very, very slow. Take your time, only buy what you need. Remind you guys that know that your weight's gonna shift, you know, that you've had a nice drop, right? And you finally made it into a size 10. And I can tell you that if you're someone who works out regularly, if you lift weights, you may be a size 10 January 1st and your proportions look a certain way. And then uh, March, you may still be a size 10, but your proportions are slightly different now because you've been pumping iron and lifting weight. And all of that matters in what you're choosing to buy clothing. So I would suggest that you should probably be in the size for a little while before you start to go out and really, you know, do some, some heavy duty purchasing in that size. Um, for me, now, because I haven't started buying super expensive pieces, I've kind of found myself in this middle because I am at goal. I'm at goal now, but I have, I'm still on a journey to find my style. So before I do a ton of investing in things that I may no longer like once I'm, you know, settled and figured out what I really like and what looks good on this body. Because you have to remember that you're going to have a new body. It's not going to necessarily be the same. It's, it, even though it's smaller, the proportions may look different. So what you're used to 
looking good on you may not look good on you anymore. So you have to make allowances for that. So if you go out and splurge and get this whole wardrobe to what you think your body, you know, looks like, and it doesn't really look like that, you've wasted a ton of money. And why do I know that? Because I did that. <laughs> so I just want you to know that your shape will shift. One of the things that I encourage you guys to do is to do what I'm doing, not necessarily make YouTube videos, but film yourself. Like go in the mirror with your phone and film yourself with the clothing on. I'm not gonna say take pictures because I took pictures and I couldn't see it in a picture because guess what, I know my angles. So of course I'm gonna angle myself so that the proportions look right on me. Um, so filming myself, I was able to really like just kind of strip myself down and understand what I was really working with and what I really needed, what were my concerns and what I really needed to purchase for. And what I mean by purchase for, like am I purchasing for a larger stomach and smaller hips? Am I purchasing for um, bigger breasts but small shoulders, you know? Like whatever it is your areas of concern are, you're gonna really need to understand that before you get out there and start doing a ton of buying and buying, like I said, expensive pieces. However, this journey is supposed to be fun and it's not supposed to be something that gives you a headache and feels overwhelming. You're supposed to celebrate every step of the way. So if you are someone who, you know, you live a casual life, you traditional wife, you stay at home and you can wear workout clothes all the time, that's fabulous. That is the, that's probably the most ideal way to be so that you don't have to really invest a lot of money into clothing. But if you are someone who works and you know you have to be out in the world and participating, you've got to present well, I hope that these tips will kind of help you navigate that so that you are not wasting a lot of money, time, and energy um, on things that are not there for the long haul. So I think what's most important is that we don't get so attached to the clothing that we stay focused on the goal. And trust me, you're gonna look beautiful every step of the way. I promise you will. So that's all that I have for you guys today. I am going to start working on the editing of the dopamine haul. Um, I'm gonna do some fun editing with that. I'm gonna split the videos up because I've got quite a few pieces in the dopamine and I'll get those posted. So you guys will probably have two videos like this week, you probably have two videos, so. Anyway, that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll holler at you guys later.